Psalm number 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, for the weeks of Advent, uh, for those who you haven't been with us uh, through Advent, what we've been doing during the weeks running up to today, uh, we've had a little series going uh, discussing the reasons why uh, we men and women need a Savior. You know, during Advent each year, the theme is often, as you've heard some of it tonight, the, the promises made beforehand, you know, centuries beforehand, and uh, prophecies that were uh, given in the Old Testament era about this anointed one who was to come, you know, a redeemer, a savior. Um, you often hear when you're studying the four gospels how Israel was waiting for the Messiah. You know, the religious mood in Israel as the New Testament opens uh, is, you could say, one of expectation. Okay, how long, O Lord, until you send uh, the promised one that we read about to save your people? When will the prophet come? Uh, that Moses spoke about. And, and as you know, uh, the carols that we sing at Christmas are full of uh, thrilled rejoicing at the uh, fulfillment of the promises. You know, so exciting to uh, celebrate that uh, what God promised with his mouth, he has now fulfilled with his arm, uh, and, and the one that we've long waited for has come. Uh, so, all right, where has the joy and the celebration gone, generally speaking? I mean, uh, people like Christmas well enough, I suppose, but as far as the Savior part, uh, not a whole lot of excitement for the most part. Okay, now you know what the song says, a thrill of hope, a thrill. The weary world rejoices. Well, does it? Uh, you know what the scripture says about God sending his son, you know, he came and his people received him not. Okay, the Savior has come, right? We have this amazing good news to tell, uh, so why is it people don't receive him? You know, should be, you would think, incredible joy all around, you know, from pole to pole, right? And uh, why is there not more of a, uh, a response? So mustn't it be, and here's been kind of our premise the last few weeks, mustn't it be because uh, they've no sense of their actual need for him? Hey, what do I need a Savior for? You know, we tell you, a Savior has come. Well, I don't, I, what do I need a Savior? They don't even know why. People just don't have a grasp of the, um, the human condition, which is their condition, your condition. And so they don't come to Jesus Christ because they don't see why he's the appropriate one to turn to if, in fact, uh, we're supposed to turn to anybody at all. So we've spent five Sundays now laying out why. Okay, if you knew why, perhaps you would be uh, more inclined to respond to this thing that God has done in sending the, the Savior. So, uh, just to recap, uh, the, the first reason why you need a Savior is because men and women are ignorant of God. Okay, they just plain don't know God as he is. Right, the God who formed the world, he is a certain being. Right, and he is, as he, he is what he is. And it just won't do to um, make up stuff about him and say, here's what I think. Okay, he is what he is, and we better find out what that is, don't you think? Okay, the world, in its wisdom, knew not God. Okay, and therefore, because that's the case, men and women's relationship with God is, by default, broken. And how could it be otherwise? I mean, if you don't know him, how could you say, you're on the same phase with him or in sync with him or in fellowship with him or whatever term you want to use, how could you say you're his friend? So that's the first reason you need help. You know, who even is God? How would you know? Well, you don't know unless he reveals himself somehow. Okay, well, he sent this one down to us who is the very brightness of God's glory and is the exact representation of his character. 
Right? No one has ever seen God at any time, but the Son, who is in the very bosom of the Father, has declared him to us. Right? So Christ meets a very basic, essential need, our need to know God, who he is, and not just whatever caricature of him we think best. Okay? And then secondly, of course, we are all tainted with and imprisoned by uh, sin dwelling within us. Right? Uh, wretched man that I am, why do I do all these things I don't want to do? Right? Even when I, I want to do what's good, sin is right there with me, provoking me, you know, so that I do things that are not proper, since I'm filled with unrighteousness. Okay? I want to do good, but okay? envy, strife, deceit, boasting, disobedience to my parents, insolence, arrogance, untrustworthiness. Okay? There is a, um, a contention, a war going on inside me between my will to do what's right and my natural impulse is driving me, okay? Wouldn't it just be fantastic to be set free from that? Well, that's what the Savior was sent down here to do, right? To save us from that war, that feeling of um, guilt, uh, that trap, okay? Uh, uh, that shame. What freedom that will be someday to never sin again. Right? To never go against my conscience. Right? To be spotless and never to do the thing that I hate, the thing that pollutes me. Okay? Thank God for his son who makes me righteous. Don't you realize you need righteousness? Okay, I'm, I'm excited about that. And uh, thirdly, besides that, we are so weak. Okay? You're so weak. We're dust and ashes. You're here today. You're gone tomorrow. You're getting older and creakier every day, right? My flesh and my heart fail. That's what the psalmist says. You're not strong, okay? You can't even stay awake for 48 hours in a row without losing it, okay? How do you expect to stay alive forever and ever, okay? You have a limit. You have an expiration date, okay? Who is, who's going to save you from your past your expiration date? Your pharmacist? No, okay? I would say you have a need for a savior, Okay, well, this Savior says, I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and Hades. When God says he's going to send us a Savior, he knows exactly what we need. He sent us a Savior who meets our need. Okay, and then there's, fourthly, there's the despair of and the, the futility of life. Okay, human endeavor. All you ever do, all you ever build, all you ever accomplish, all you ever collect, everything you do, and say, say you get famous. Say you get rich, okay? You say you become an inventor, you know? When you come to the end, there is nothing in your hand that you can take away from all of your labors. All of your labors end right there, okay? And the Bible says it's vanity and vexation of spirit. So is there any solution? Is there a savior? All right, so to this morning we talked about, well, let's look around. Maybe we can find a man. You know, somebody among, there's eight billion people in the world, somebody surely uh, uh, among the cream of the crop. Right? Maybe if we look from east to west and south to north, somebody on earth might have the right skill set, you know, the right uh, uh, the charisma to lead humanity on to glory. And you know, there have been plenty of people down through history who seem to have thought they're the one, you know, the man for our time, you know, some world changer, some revolutionary, right? people who inspire, people who promise you the moon. Okay, but well, what is history but wreckage? It's just a parade of the wreckage left behind by one after another of them. Okay, all these self-proclaimed uh, candidates for savior, they've all failed, and here we are, we still need saving. Okay, as much as men and women ever did. So this morning, it was the help of man is useless. So anyway, I'd say we covered some, covered some important ground, I think, over the last few weeks. And you know how well I think that we have shown the truth of the angel's words to the shepherds Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Savior who meets our need. Okay, he is a Savior who is exactly what we need. He is fit for us. It's a perfect fit. The knowledge of God, reconciliation with God, liberation from the power of sin, uh, strength for my weakness, security, a purpose, enduring life, a, a leader, right? One who cannot fail, right? Like all, all the others fail. God's promise 
Right, Danny just read it. Out of you, O Bethlehem, will come forth to me one who will shepherd my people Israel. Okay, that's God's promise. I will give you a shepherd after my own heart. Okay, a shepherd just like myself, who is the exact representation of my character. And uh, so this psalm, I mean, you've heard the psalm. This is a choice psalm, but it perfectly summed. I want you to hear it again because it perfectly caps up, caps off and, and sums up everything that we've been thinking about the last few weeks. Okay, I want you to hear it one more time. New, in light of all that we've been discussing. Okay, to me, it's, this is the, the choice. Right? Unto you is born this day this person. The Lord, he is Christ the Lord, right? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, he meets all my need. All my most serious, my most basic needs are met. Right? Uh, Paul says, indeed, I have all and abound. I'm full. Right? Nobody else can do this. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Right? That is security. That is guidance. Uh, that's rest. Okay, come to me and I will give you rest for your soul. Right? He restores my soul. What's my problem? One of my problems is weakness. Right? Well, what did Paul say? When I am weak, then I am strong. Right? Outwardly wasting away, inwardly I'm being renewed every day. Right? He gives me rest for my soul. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. What's one of my problems? Sin. Sin dwelling in me. But again, he leads me. Second time already in the psalm said, he leads me. Right? He meets my need. My need is righteousness. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Okay? His name. For his name's like, I know him. We know each other. I know his mind. I know his will. He teaches me. Right? He leads me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil, for you are with me. Right? Emmanuel means what? God with me, with us. He's always there with me. That literally, now, in me. Okay, you remember what Jesus said to the, uh, the disciples in the upper room that last night about the Holy Spirit? He is with you and will be in you. Will be in you. He's always with me. Okay, and he is the Almighty, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Almighty, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. So what's to fear? I have a Savior. Okay, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now I have confidence, I have assurance, stability, peace. Now you prepare a table before me right in the presence of my enemies. What can man do to me? Right, happy is, it was from this morning, happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides upon the heavens to help you. The eternal God is your refuge and he will thrust out the enemy from before you. You anoint my head with oil, make me beautiful, my cup runs over, I'm satisfied, right? The fountain of living water. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without cost. Eat and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Hey, why do you spend yourselves? Why do you waste your wages on what cannot satisfy? God sent you a savior. Surely goodness and mercy or loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No more of this vanity and vexation of spirit. No more spinning my tires. No more chasing after the wind. No more of this saying, well, what good is it all for? You know, what's it all for? I found the one my soul loves, right? All the days of my life and forever. Okay, people ignore Jesus Christ. They like Christmas well enough, I guess. But they still, well, they're in want. They still continue to want. When Christmas is over, people who ignore Jesus Christ all will go on with their needs still unmet. Right, the promise of God to you through the psalmist is, I shall not want. What a thought. I mean, what a thought. I shall not want a thing. I, indeed, I have all 
and abound. I am full. That's the promise of all your needs met. Right? A Savior who meets your need. Not what you think your need is. Okay? Not more money, not more education, not more technology, not more pleasure. That's not your need. What your real need is. Okay? People like Christmas because you have this time where you get to feed your need, you know, what you think your need is, but you fail to address your actual essential need. So when Christmas is over, you still want. They still faint, they still struggle, they still fear, they hunger again, they thirst again. They're not filled. Okay, their soul has no rest. They waste away outwardly and inwardly. Now, like Isaiah said this morning, they wander through the land famished, cursing their king and cursing their God. Woe is us, we waste away, the harvest is past, the season has ended, and we are still not saved. And then you have your Christian friend come up to you and say, uh, you need, we have a Savior. And you say, what do I need a Savior for? Are you not paying attention? Listen to yourself. Okay, listen to yourself. Complain about the world. Complain about work. You complain about evil. You complain about getting older and getting closer to death. You complain about your burdens. All right, listen to the song again. A thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Unto you is born this day the one that your soul has been waiting for, maybe without you knowing it. A shepherd for my people, that's your need. A shepherd after God's own heart. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. I fear no evil because he is with me. He comforts me. He feeds me. He watches over me in the presence of my enemies. He satisfies my longing and fills my hungry soul with goodness. His goodness and mercy will be with me all my life, and I will dwell in his house forever. Okay, come let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that the Lord has told us about. Well, I recommend you do the same thing. Friends, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we bless your name, and thank you, thank you, Lord God, that you have sent this gift of yourself your own Son, the, the, the Godhead, to dwell among us, to, to open our eyes, to bring us out of darkness, to bring us out of futility, weakness, death even. We know, Lord God, you have the power of death. You've raised up one from the dead already. And you've promised to do the same for us who are in him. Father, my prayer for all of these loved ones tonight is that we would all know you that we would all find the truth in you, to learn about you as you are, to know the mighty works that you have done, to feel your love for us, uh, your compassion for us, your patience with us, uh, and your righteousness, Lord God, uh, the righteousness that you would impart to us if we would let you. Uh, so I pray that you would draw us all close to yourself, uh, that our, our hearts would long for and love the name of the Lord Jesus and want to imitate him and be with him and be like him. Thank you for this body of, uh, of your sons and daughters, Lord. Thank you for your church, for your spirit that dwells in our hearts by faith. And we pray that you would add to your number, Lord God, add to the number of the redeemed through Jesus Christ is our prayer. Amen. Amen.